dude, your long wait is over. Now, the Sonic Society. Check it. Oh, oh, have I said that I didn't miss this at all enough yet? Oh, well, at least my luck is holding. I'm out of the cell on the tortoise and away from the icebox monster, the Gular, but I programmed the Audi to take me right to David. It, it should have sent me back to the control center of the tortoise. Well, certainly not here. Where am I? I landed on grass. That was lucky. The sidewalk's not even five feet from where I fell. I'd rather hit something with a little more give than concrete. Now, what's the Audi say? Oh, that's strange. According to the Audi, I'm in an area that both includes the Elysium Project by Natalie Van Sisten and Jay Smith's Hidden Harbor Mysteries Part 4. Elysium. To the Greeks, it was heaven, the reason they strove to be good in this life. To us, it was a miracle, a synthetic drug that would allow us to manipulate the world around us, telekinetically, by thought and emotion. They promised us a chance to be part of something big. They never said that they would get results, no matter what it did to us. No matter who we lost. The Elysium Project. Written and produced by Natalie Van Sistein. Episode 1. Escape. And tonight is the Jefferson opening at the Chateau. Will you be attending or no? Probably. I said I'd at least make an appearance. All right then. Uh, James, hold on a minute. What? You are practically a genius. Yet you still can't seem to tie a tie properly. Well, that's why I have you. And here I thought I was just your secretary. James, good to see you again. And you as well, Mr. Bastios. It's been almost three months now, hasn't it? I believe so. And you, miss? It's Monica. Good to see you again, Mr. Bastios. Charmed, my dear. Now, James, I suppose we have a last order of business to take care of. You will excuse us. Monica? Of course. You'll forgive me for making this brief, James, but I am pressed for time. That won't be a problem. After all, this should be the last time I have to sign anything for you. Quite a shame, considering how long you've been with us. Yes, but I don't want to chain myself to a single project for the rest of my life. I have other interests to pursue, and I'm ready to move on. We assumed as much. I have your contract here, though I'm afraid there have been some changes since we last discussed the terms. Changes? James, despite its initial success, the long-term results your formula has yielded have proven to be, <laughs> well, unpredictable. My clients are concerned, and unfortunately, that does reflect on our initial agreement. What are you talking about? We already made the deal- Based on the original conditions. Your formula is by far the most superior of any we have produced. But these side effects are still proving to be a challenge for our other researchers to overcome. We have decided that the formula must be restructured and retested before it will be of use to our clients. 
That will take time. And until then, we have decided not to transfer all of the original payment we agreed on. I've given almost 20 years of my life to this project, Bastios. You promised me the full payment up front in our original agreement. We are offering you 50% up front. Not to mention our provision for all of the extravagant expenses you have amassed during your tenure with us. This money is integral to my future research. We would be able to double the final payment, as long as the formula proves its worth. Perhaps in... two years? You think I'm just going to agree to that? This agreement was made years ago, and the terms clearly stated... Those are the terms we have set now, Mr. Grayson. And if you were not fond of them, then I would be curious to know who you would argue your case to. We both know that turning to the government in this situation would be unwise, to say the least. Besides, we have your research, the test subjects, and the formula itself. You have nothing more we desire to negotiate further. And I believe we have taken excellent care of you while you were under our employ. The offer hardly seems unfair. Give me the 50% and keep your double. You won't reconsider. No. Monica will leave you the information to have the money wired directly to my account. And in case I have not made myself clear, I want nothing more from you after this transaction. Of course, Mr. Grayson. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. The pleasure was all mine. James, is everything all right? Of course not. They were never going to settle. Not for everything they'd promised, anyway. How much did you get? Half. And double the original fee if I were to wait for their investment to prove its worth. And you didn't take it? No, I told you, we're severing all ties with Bastios. I want to enjoy my success. Not spend the rest of my life responsible for whatever Bastios and his clients dream up to do with the formula. Anyway, it's not like I didn't see this coming. I've taken some precautions in case it did. What are you planning? Oh, nothing, of course. Since we've also turned over the network to Bastios' group, there was a chance that the security on our test subjects at the facility may be... compromised? Disconnected, even. I'm sure it's all been taken care of, James. Especially since it would be such an inconvenience to Mr. Bastios if the test subjects decided to leave the facility? Yes, Monica. Yes, it would. For a minute. And not for much longer. Ian, this alleyway is a dead end. How are we- On fire escape! There! Got it. I'll go first. Yeah. No problem, Jess. Here. Wait for me to get over the edge. Jess, is the coast clear? Jess? Jess? I'm right here, Ian. Oh, good. I was worried something happened. Look, I'm just trying not to broadcast what we are to those guys coming after us. <sighs> They'd still have to make it up here. We should be fine now. <laughs> yeah, if they're the only ones after us. Let's just go. Where are you going? Away from the guns, remember? Yeah, but we have a rendezvous point, remember? Yeah, you don't know at all, do you? You're not Jess. <laughs> Ian, what are you talking about? <laughs> of course I'm Jessica. Actually, you're not. Mirage. <laughs> and I thought I was doing so well. Looks like we get to do this the hard way. Ian, look out! <laughs> <laughs> Him? 
glad you can make it, Jess. At least for real this time. Of course it's Mirage. We need to get Ian out of there. Right. Let's see if he can handle this. to that too. Idiot! That looked nothing like me! You wanna bet, Jess? I'd like to give you some credit that you're not that stupid! Enough! That wasn't a lethal shot. And with whatever they did to him, he'll probably recover in a few minutes. We need to get out of here. We'll have to find somewhere else to go now. Still, we're out. That's the important thing. Out doesn't mean we're safe. We have these crazy abilities, and we're basically escaping with stolen property for all the experimental drugs they've gotten us. They even sent him after us. And he's on the ground right now, and won't be getting up for a while. But there could be more. This entire escape might be another one of their experiments. They deactivate the tracking bracelets for a few minutes, see if we can get out of the academy. Then how far we can run. Then we run, and let them just try to catch us. I think Jess is right this time. This could be our only chance to really get away from the experiments. Yeah, I know. And the others are waiting for us. Let's meet up with them at the rendezvous point, and we can figure out what to do from there. Sounds good. <laughs> sure, we're just a couple of escaped test subjects. What could possibly go wrong? Hey, Melissa. Um, I'm sorry. You're not still at work, are you? Uh, well, I am, but since when does that matter? They make me work Friday nights, I take my sweet time and answer BFF support calls. It's all good. <laughs> so what's up? Not a whole lot. Just had some time. By the way, you have got to be getting better weather than here. You know, I swear Chicago has hidden wind tunnels every other street. And I mean, it's not even winter anymore. I thought we were done with this nonsense. Uh, the weather's fine, I guess. Hey, I didn't realize it was this late already. I get to go home in a few hours. Wait, is Nick not there yet? I thought you had your date tonight. Or I could be getting time zones wrong again. You need to stop moving so I can keep track of you better. Uh, well, no. Nick's here. Okay... And you're on the phone with me because... Melissa, I can't do this. No, 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 no. Emma, no. You are not doing this. I'm not gonna let you. I changed my mind. No, you're being a coward. Where are you? Have you even left the apartment? I'm in the bathroom. You're pathetic. Just tell me how I can get Nick to leave and not think I'm a total freak. Well, I'm kind of thinking the normal way. You go out with him and have a good time. Uh, uh, Emma, there is no way things can be that bad already. Why do you even want him gone? You told me he's the one who asked you out, and you said yes, so now you have to live with the consequences. Just trust me on this. This is one of those rare times in life when that is not such a bad thing. Especially when the guy is as hot as Nick was in the pictures you sent me. Well, it's not so much that I don't want to go out with him, in theory. You're beating around the bush again. There's too much that could go wrong. I mean, you know what I'm up against. Well, the damage is already kind of done if the guy is standing in your apartment. Enjoy the consequences. Except Nick probably thinks I'm a total freak for locking myself in the bathroom to talk to you. False bravado. If you start apologizing, he's gonna catch on, so just... 
don't acknowledge it and act like nothing happened. Everyone BSs the first night. You're already on the right track. You hear that? That's my head. Against the wall. Emma? Coming! Just a sec! Emma, I'm your friend, but this can't possibly get any worse with or without my help. Can't wait to hear about it tomorrow! Melissa! <clears throat> Is everything... okay? I, I thought I heard you talking to someone. No, um... I... well, I, I wasn't. I was... I wasn't talking to myself, if that's what you meant. It's all good. <clears throat> uh, right. Anyway, you've got quite the place here. You know, I used to think we both went to a rich kid's school, but after this, I might need to reevaluate my life. It's kind of overkill, really. All my dad's idea. I don't think we need so much of... all of this. Well, I can take the flat screen in the living room off your hands if you really twist my arm. Well... I'm sure you could come over, if you want to use it sometime. Sure, I'd be down for that. So, you want to get out of here? Uh, leave. I mean, we, we don't have to go right away. Maybe we could just hang out here or something? I thought we made plans to go out. You know, the always classic dinner in a movie. I already bought the tickets. Oh, right. I... Uh, I... Did something happen since school? Oh... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't do this. Hey, hey. Are you okay? You don't look so good. No, it's just so stupid. <laughs> Emma, you seem like you're dealing with some kind of intense moral dilemma, but I have no idea what's going on here. What happened? I'm not allowed to leave this apartment. So, you're grounded? As in, I can't leave without a driver, or an escort, or someone to protect me. Because my dad makes his living doing something I'm never allowed to talk about, and apparently that puts me in danger. Or he's just that psychotic and paranoid. Whew. Alright. Not my first guess, but uh, okay. So your dad works for the, uh, the government or something? Maybe. I'm dead serious. I have no idea what he does or why it's such a big secret. We just don't talk about it. Ever. I don't think I'm actually allowed to. Right, but you still said you wanted to go out with me anyway? I wanted to. <sighs> I don't know. What else was I going to say? No, my psycho secret agent in or mafia dad would never let me. I hate this. Would it be better if I just... left? Maybe that'd be best. Yeah. And you don't have to talk to me at school or anything after this, too. I'll probably be moving in a few months, so it's not like it'll be for forever. Wait, now you're moving again? I thought you just got here like two months ago. Yeah? I always move after a few months. I've lived everywhere. Everywhere? Is that part of the whole secret agent mafia thing, too? <sighs> you know, since you're here, it'd just be easier to show you. Is this your room? Yeah, I pretty much live in my room no matter where we are. Wow, that's a lot of pictures on the wall. And you took them all yourself? I've moved 28 times in 17 years. I take a lot of pictures and keep them hung up like this because it all blurs together in my head after a while. It's the only way I can remember things. My favorite things. And if that was my life in France or Colorado. But not people. Hmm? The pictures. I was just noticing. There aren't any people in them. At least not people you were with when you took their picture. Just some people on benches and crowds. Kind of like they're part of the scenery. I don't really know anyone to take a picture of. <laughs> I have one friend. My best friend, Melissa. She's in that picture there, who lives in Chicago. But I met her online through a forum and we can't exactly take pictures together. Okay, well, how about me? I'm here, you know me. Well, you kind of bailed on our date, but that's not really the point. Uh, what else do you need? I guess... I just use my phone. It's really nothing fancy. That'll work, and we could even try this. Uh, uh, 
All right, smile. I... I like it. Good. Well, this is probably the shortest date I've ever had, but definitely one of the more interesting ones. I guess I'll see you at school? I don't know. About seeing me or the date? I'm not sure of what I'm doing anymore. Or even why I'm doing it. But I do want to go out with you. I think I will. Good. Because right now I'm just waiting for you. James, it's nearly ten. Do you plan on leaving this evening, or should I have the suite prepared? No, I, I should be done soon. It's been odd the past few days, not having Bastios breathing down my neck. But there's so much I'm behind on. Any new projects? A few ideas. But I'm still tying up loose ends left from Elysium. They keep surfacing everywhere when I thought they'd been taken care of. James? Your cell. Not now. I'll take it later. James, it's Bastios. Yes? Hello, James. What do you want, Bastios? I was wondering what you might consider a fair course of retaliation for five missing subjects. You let five of them get away? That doesn't sound like your company's spotless track record at all. It wasn't expected, but we've chosen to consider it an experiment. It's provided invaluable insight into their resourcefulness and the skills we've given them. All the same, your meddling was inexcusable. You've raised more than a little hell for me, and I don't appreciate that. I didn't appreciate you crossing me, either. I'm sure we'll both have to manage. My affairs are the least of your worries, James. I chose to call about your daughter. Emma? Yes. I'm afraid this little game may have tipped the scales of her neutrality. You promised she would be protected. You and I know exactly why he can't know that oh, she- Oh, she's still under my protection. I'm not an idiot, James. But I have decided that we're going to change the playing field. One subject in exchange for five. That's more than gracious of me. It might confirm a few suspicions, but of course it's just as likely that nothing will happen at all. Bastios. We can come to an arrangement. Of course, James. Why do you think I called? Thirty minutes isn't much time to find her, but it's a head start all the same. Best not waste it. There. What do you think? About the picture? It's a pretty shot, I guess. For a wall. I've never been downtown like this before. Everything is different up close everywhere you look. Even the people. So you've never just gone walking somewhere? Well, yes, but in private gardens or parks. I always have an escort in the city, and then we usually drive everywhere, too. You should have seen me when my dad finally agreed to let me go to school instead of getting another tutor. That was back in Seattle last year, but it was like Christmas. The way you keep describing your dad's security plan, I'm surprised I wasn't tackled by a SWAT team when we left the building. <laughs> me too. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. You should see the look on your face. I'm not sure if I'm more surprised by the fact that I believed you, or that you just made that joke. I think my dad just assumes I'd never do anything, so he doesn't have people watching me around the clock. But that is why we took the side door, just to be safe. Right. But he does realize this isn't gonna last forever. Uh, aren't you gonna move out after you graduate? I haven't really thought about it. And Dad's never said anything either. I mean, I can afford to go anywhere, so it's not such a big deal to get into whatever college I want. It's just more school. Probably like it's always been. That sounds depressing. Why do you think I don't think about it much? Maybe this is a dumb question, but what is it like to be normal? Normal? I wouldn't exactly say I'm normal. I don't really think anyone considers themselves normal. 
You seem normal to me. If you want to compare, maybe, but I think the more you get out, the more you realize normal just doesn't really happen in real life. But to humor your question, I, I mean, what do you want to know? Well, I really just know you a little from school. You play soccer, you have really good grades. Eh, that's the boring stuff. You can look that up anywhere and slap it on a report card. It doesn't tell that much about me. Okay. So, what are you going to tell me about yourself? Well, I still eat Fruit Loops for breakfast, and... Uh, I, I got a pretty sweet bike last year for my birthday, but that's in the shop because of some reckless driving and speeding tickets I may have picked up, and... Uh, I'm partially fluent in Mandarin, because my family lived in Beijing until I was eight. Uh, Beijing? I lived in Nanjing a couple years ago. Seriously? I think we visited there once, but I don't remember too much of it. Except the humidity. All the time. Ugh, I don't miss it. Did your whole family live in Beijing? Oh, yeah. My mom specializes in international law, so up until a couple of years ago, she was one of the chief aides to the American ambassador there. Initially, the move was to cut back on travel, but it was really impossible to avoid either way. When the trade tension started getting worse, my parents eventually just decided to come back. Wait. If your mom was still an aide to the ambassador, then two years ago... Was she part of the hostage crisis? Yeah, she was there. Actually, the guy who was killed by the extremist group that's trying to influence the government there, she has his job now. Doesn't that freak you out? With all the threats they've made lately, that has to be dangerous for your mom. For you too. For my parents, sure. But they keep me under wraps, kind of like your situation. As far as I know, I haven't been targeted before. Anyway, it's not like I know any national secrets, but it's safe to say we've probably avoided almost six different wars in the past year and a half because of the extremist cell and how they're gaining more influence in the different governments. If the public knew half of how strained things are right now, beyond what they already know, I think more than the economy would be crashing. And both my parents are in the middle of it. My dad used to be my mother's translator. That's how they met. But he works with some of the other aides now. Anyway, that's about as normal as I get. Wow. I had no idea. <laughs> but it sounds like we have a few things in common. I'm glad you told me. Actually, I think that makes me feel better about all this. And not so... alone. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. And don't we have a movie to catch? We're starting to veer off course a bit with your picture taking. Yeah, because the girl who's never been to this part of town knows exactly where we're going. Well, then I will get you a map and teach you how to use it. Hello? Is anyone there? Huh? What the? Please? Can you help me? Is that a kid? Why would she be out here alone? I have no idea. Let me go see what it is. Why don't you get your phone out and have 911 ready, just in case? Okay. Hello? Hello? Who's there? Are you coming to help me? Yeah, I can help you. What happened? There was a scary man. He tried to hurt me. Emma, call them now and stay here. I'm going to go get her, but there's a chance this guy could still be here. Okay. What's going on? I, I swear I had bars a few seconds ago. <laughs> hey, are you alright? <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, where did she? What the hell? Nick? Nick? Ah! Hello, Emma. Where did you come from? What did you do to Nick and that girl? What? Her? <laughs> She's just in my head. Don't worry about her. Or your boyfriend, for that matter. It's just the two of us right now. Who are you? Something your father's been hiding for a long time, Emma. I'm one of his mistakes. Always wanted to meet you, though. I wonder if you're just as unwanted. I don't understand. You're not going to. Yet. It's all right. Unfortunately, that doesn't do much to improve this situation for you. I'm surprised. You haven't started running yet.
my legs won't work. Is this a dream? Sorry, but no. And this syringe I'm holding is very real. And I'm afraid it's really going to hurt when this formula kicks in. Emma, run! Hurt me! Nick! You want to screw with us? I'm gonna... You sick bastard. What is this thing? Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Whoops. Good thing I've got another one. Just in case. Right, Emma? Please, please, please. Don't kill me. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to kill you. This is just revenge. And believe me, Daddy is going to love you when this is all over. Oh, and be sure to tell him this was personal. No. No. Stay back. <laughs> You'll do what? Scream. <laughs> The Elysium Project was written and produced by Natalie Van Sistine. Original sound design and mixing was also by Natalie Van Sistine. Script editing by Amanda Gonzalez. Original cover artwork by Emily Fajardo. Music by Jonathan Johnson and Natalie Van Sistine. With additional tracks from Kai Hartwig of HartwigMedia.com. For more information, visit ElysiumProjectAudio.weebly.com and subscribe to us on iTunes. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and SoundCloud at Elysium Project Audio. Thanks for listening. Eagle Brand Cigarettes, the mildest smoothest brand of smoking tobacco in the land brings you Hidden Harbor Mysteries. Yesterday, we were introduced to the alluring but dangerous Mistress Penumbra, who rules her urban empire without mercy or pity. After sending a gang of thugs to rob a charity ball held by our heroine, Barbara Wilson, the leader career criminal Heath Rat Rathborn was captured by Barbara in her guise and alter ego known to the underworld as the Femme Phantom. We'll find out more in a moment, but first... Eagle Brand Cigarettes wants to introduce you to the star of tonight's show. By permission of RJO Pictures, the lovely and talented star of A Night in Chicago, and this summer's widely anticipated romance, Lost for Time, Samantha Eubanks. Hello, everyone. I want to tell you what a joy it is to be working again in radio. The lights of Tinseltown shine bright on a life of glamour and excitement. But there's nothing I like better than sharing a microphone with great actors telling a great story here in Hidden Harbor as the heroic Barbara Wilson and the mysterious Femme Phantom. It's wonderful to have you, Samantha. And I'm thrilled that Eagle Cigarettes, the smoothest, most satisfying brand on the market, is our sponsor. While I don't smoke Eagle myself, I can tell you that my husband, RJO film star Rex Allen, enjoys them on the set of his latest picture and is sure to have a carton on hand wherever he's appearing. He appreciates the rich flavor that lacks the bitter afterbite of most cigarettes. I can sure tell the difference when I kiss him. It's the healthiest brand out there, too. So, ladies... Get your man to try the brand that's best, won't you? Eagle Cigarettes. Thank you, Samantha. And now, Eagle Brand Cigarettes takes you back to Hidden Harbor and joins our heroes in a secret chamber, interrogating the leader of a gang that tried to rob a charity ball less than an hour earlier. As they close in on answers, they learn, too late... That time is running out. <laughs> she told
told me if I didn't make it back by quarter till, I'd have one last drink on her. <coughs> Who? Oh, what is that smell? Cleaning fluid? Look at his mouth, he's bleeding. <laughs> that woman, such a sense of humor. <laughs> That's right. One more for my baby and <coughs> one more for the... <laughs> Don't touch him. That's acid. I'm wondering how, Doc. Quite grotesque. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach. At least that is where it was concentrated. How did it get there? From what you told me, this man was informed that he had until 2.45 a.m. before he met his fate. I imagine there was some sort of timed release in the form of some corroded membrane. Slowly, either from within, without, or both, the acid melted through the entire membrane and burned him alive from inside. The thing is that it would take a skilled surgeon an hour to get in and remove something like that. Oh, Dr. Krieg, who would do such a thing? We're dealing with dark forces, my friends. I suspect anyone else in his gang still out there tonight is suffering the same horrific fate. I wonder if the other thugs in the gang had the same thing happen to them about now. Huh? I'm gonna check the police radio and my contact at Metro Hospital. I doubt the others were informed of their condition. Twelve men with acidic time bombs inside them. A dozen surgeons would need to be ready the instant they returned. There was no margin for error. You're suggesting most of the men and women in that gang were sent on a suicide mission? Not suicide, my dear. They were murdered. They had no time to complete the mission. And I only know one or two surgeons in this city skilled enough to perform an emergency procedure like this, even if they knew what to look for. Whoever did this wanted to send a message. They waited until the most powerful and influential people in town were present and showed them an adversary capable of sending an entire team of criminals to their deaths. Something big is about to happen in Hidden Harbor, and we have to stop it. But who sent them, boss? You said you couldn't read Rathborn. Why is that? I suspect his mind was clouded. He wasn't thinking. He was more a puppet. A voodoo zombie than a mastermind. He said, mistress. Who is that? I've heard that term quite a few times, whispered between frightened men from different gangs in the city. I just checked the wireless. The police report others in the gang died the same way. Some look like they just dropped over in mid-run, with their insides boiling out into the street. Your friend here was likely told to give him incentive to succeed in the mission, and return with whatever they were after. These men would not have been able to hold whatever they were after for very long. Precisely. There must have been another group waiting near the museum. And I was too busy hobnobbing with the rich. I might have spotted it if I'd stayed out. That's the fatigue talking, boss. You really need rest. Welcome back, Miss Wilson. You can't hold that state forever. But it helps me think. The music of my spirit guides gives me access to different perspectives, ways of thinking about the mystery. Boss, I don't want to handle you, but there are other obligations bright and early, as in four hours from now. Before you unleash hell on the gangs of Hidden Harbor, perhaps you should recuperate. Let the boys poke around for a while for you. I agree. I didn't even realize I was still projecting my other self, and now... The same force that gives you power fuels your real body. It's like wearing a suit of armor all the time. It protects you, but it wears you down. You need rest, boss. Yes. We will know more in the morning, Miss Wilson. Yes. Thank you all. You were quick and decisive. You saved many lives tonight, including mine. Well done. You too, but Hey, and she's gone. She was standing right there.
I was looking right at her. That, that will always be unnerving. Ever since she chose to patrol the streets with this new fanciful identity of hers, I don't think she has slept at all. She doesn't really sleep. She meditates. I guess with everything else she does, it shouldn't shock me that she can recharge on an hour of meditation. She says she can reach out and sense what's going on in the city. It's how she plans her patrols. She's just lucky no one got lucky on her patrol and put a bullet through her. She can mess with people's heads, but a bullet just goes where it's fired. Well, that's why we have you and Dr. Krieg, Casper. I hope you can fix that. See you in a few hours. We follow our heroine rising along a circular staircase leading up the museum's disused clock tower, silently ascending three stories to a single locked door. Passing through, Barbara enters a bare room of stone and old wood with the musty smell of a storage attic, the cylindrical chamber where a once grand clockwork told the hour for old uptown. Its single circular plane is now a window overlooking most of Hidden Harbor and the Atlantic Ocean beyond. The first signs of dawn singe the horizon as Barbara slides out of her formal dress and kneels on a small red carpet. Eyes closed, her mind tunes into the forces that grant her the power she wields. Forces bestowed upon her as a child when she unwittingly unlocked the mystery of an ancient song. Evoking the melody of that song in her mind takes Barbara out of her body, tapping into the source of her powers and summoning its unearthly composers. Spirits of light, I call upon you to restore me. Give me strength to continue my pursuit of those who've done evil in this city. To my home, grant me the wisdom to see into the hearts of my enemies so I may understand them and fight them. Barbara Wilson. Sensei. Master Fan Sun. Stepping from the nebulous mists of her memory, a small man approaches Barbara, his withered skin and bones steadied on a cane of bamboo. His ancient eyes peer at her through round spectacles. He smiles warmly, but his eyes betray a deep concern. Barbara, my dear, your strength does not flow from us, child. We are not a river that carries you on your journey. Your direction is contrary to the flow of worldly matters. You must care for yourself and fuel your journey against its current. But you and the composers of the song, they give me strength to do such amazing things. How could I possibly leap across rooftops or dance along wires without it? True, the powers you possess are not of your body, but the strength comes from within you. And so, too, your wisdom. You found us, the composers, by revealing our song. So must you work to find the answers you seek. Do you remember my gift to you? Of course, Sensei. You shared with me your artistry, your mastery of combat. No, child. I share with you my experience. One such as I could teach a child how to fight, but I shared with you each encounter, every bout, and every time I had to protect my life with my body. Even then, you were unable to mirror my abilities. Why is that, child? I felt like I'd spent a lifetime fighting, but my body was weak. It wasn't until I understood my own body and built up my endurance to strength that I could do what your gift showed me. Do you see now? Yes, Sensei. I believe I do. Good child. Follow the song. Follow it to the strength you require, and the wisdom will follow. 
As the old warrior steps backward into the mists, Barbara falls away, tumbling down through the ethereal void, emerging from the mist over a burning city. Barbara's heart pounds as her lungs fill with the smoke and ash of her ruined metropolis, the wrecked skyline recalling the fallen cities of Western Europe and the firestorms of Asia. Hills made from the blackened skeletons of residents rise across once prominent intersections of town. Only one building stands unblemished by this holocaust. The al Rune building in the center of town. As Barbara recognizes it, her body plunges to earth like a meteor, bursting with the energy of a small sun. What is the message behind the horrible vision of Hidden Harbor and what is foretold by Sensei Than Sun? Sinister forces are afoot, carrying out a diabolical plot that could lead to disaster. What can Barbara Wilson do about the rising tide of blood in Hidden Harbor? Tune in tomorrow as we continue Hidden Harbor Mysteries. Hidden Harbor Mysteries Chapter 4 was written by Jay Smith and produced by Brian Lincoln, with Dave Robison as the narrator, Veronica Jaguer as Samantha Eubanks and Barbara Wilson, Rish Outfield as Krieg, Laura Nicole as Kat Sparrow, James Baxter Patton as Casper Dixon, and Pat Crane as Fan Sun. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 license. Closing music is Here We Go Again for the First Time by Juicy Melon Jim. This has been a Brian Lincoln production. Something has caused the audio drama worlds to fuse. It must be because of the Vidic. But if the Audis said that David is here, why haven't I... Excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, of course you would be. David! Yes, of course. Strangely enough, that's my name as well. Pleased to meet you, David. And here I was beginning to think I'm the only one. David, don't you recognize me? Well, of course. You're David. You just said so. Unless somehow you were just trying to make conversation. Should I? Or have we met somewhere in the not-so-distant future? Or is it that we will meet in the somewhere distant past? I really must look up the Gallifreyan Book of Temporal Grammar Etiquette sometime. I've always wondered if the chronal past tense was actually a passive future present conjunctive. Holy Holwig, what a development! The Sonic Society Season 10 is written and produced by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music provided by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society through Creative Commons licensing. The Sonic Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada.
This has been an Electric Vicuna production.